One of the most exciting features of iWeb is the capability to add a blog or podcast to your website. While doing so may sound intimidating at first, you'll soon see that iWeb 08 handles all of the challenges so that you can dedicate your time to what really matters, making a great website. You've been working on developing your own website and would now like to add a blog and a media file to its content. The first thing we'll need to do is add a new page to our site. Because there's already a template for blogs available on iWeb, we'll begin by clicking the Add button to access the template chooser and add it to the lesson. Here we can see that iWeb features two templates for providing regular updates to our site, one for a blog and one for a podcast. Because both of these templates allow us to add podcasts, photos, and videos to the content, Deciding between the two is a function of considering the purpose of the page. If we anticipated primarily creating podcasts, the podcast template will make more sense. However, since we'll be focusing on textual entries with occasional media included, the blog page is a better choice here. Now we can see our new page in the sidebar. The disclosure triangle to the left of the blog page reveals an entry section and an archive section contained within it for our use. In the former, which is visible only to us, we can create and manage our blog posts, while the archive section is where older entries will appear. Before we add an entry, let's familiarize ourselves with the blog page layout by visiting the actual page. Because iWeb is a WYSIWYG style editor, our published blog page will look just as it does here, with the title and description of the blog displayed at the top and entries listed below it. Let's go ahead and personalize this page by adding a description of our own. As our blog fills up with posts, some of the older entries that don't fit on this page will be pushed over into the archive section. Let's check that out now. Once our blog has been put to use, this page will list all of the old entries in reverse chronological order for viewers to peruse and even to search through. That won't happen until we get the blog started though. So let's add a post now by returning to the entry section of our blog page. The top of this page shows a list of current blog entries where we can easily browse posts, add one, or delete one. Remember, our readers won't see this page. It's merely available as an editing tool for our own use. Let's go ahead and start a new entry now. iWeb automatically generates a template for our new blog and even fills in the date. Also, it highlights the template title so that we may go ahead and type our own without doing anything further. Let's do so now. Now we can add text to our blog. Double click the placeholder text and then click next and we'll do it for you. Next, let's add a media file to the page to dress it up some. To do so, we'll first want to open the media browser. See the photo called Beach? We can add it to our blog simply by dragging it onto the photo placeholder currently on the page. This is the same method we'll use to add podcasts or movies to blog or podcast pages in the future. Let's close the media browser so we can take a better look at our new blog post. Then we'll switch to the blog main page to see how it looks there. Now that we've added a blog page to our website, started a new post, and added a media entry, we can really do it all with our website. 
And remember, podcast pages follow the same format as blogs. So if you learn how to do one, the other is essentially the same. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid. 